I welcome you all to TEDx Aston University 2021. So who here thinks that we own what we think is ours? A great majority of you, right? How many times have you thought, I own my TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Google account, what I communicate with my friends, what I share with my family. It is mine. I should be able to do whatever I wish with this content. I control it. It is that clear. It's very self-explanatory, isn't it? But is it really true? Well, it will depend on your perspective. So whether you're looking at it from a layman's perspective, from a legal, philosophical, colloquial usage of this term. Generally, in law and practice uh, and philosophy, um, we cannot own what is intrinsically, innately related to us as human beings, to our persons. So we don't really own most of this content that I mentioned. And guess what? I even think that we shouldn't, ever, maybe controversially. So when we think about things that are ours, we usually think in terms of concepts of ownership and property, right? So this thing, this object, it is mine, it's my property. But is it? Well, in most Western laws and philosophies, we ascribe the notion of property and ownership to things, to material, tangible things mostly. So we cannot, we cannot really own a person and ourselves, our identities. So whether you belong to John Locke's camp, for example, great, British philosopher, you will think that because you have put in some labor into a thing, you have a right to appropriate that thing. So it's your property again. You might be in Hegel's camp, a German philosopher, uh, who maintained that if we embody our free will into a thing and things do not have free will, we have the absolute right of appropriation, as he says. So we have a right to proclaim that object ours, our property. So again, a thing, not a person. So when we talk about persons, uh, the law refuses to propertize persons and individuals. And I say once more that not just persons and individuals, but also content and communications and personal data should not be property and ownership. We should not propertize. And why, once more? Well, to put it mildly, imagine a world where you own your lungs, you own your limbs, you own your heart, your head, okay, maybe. But imagine if you could sell those, lease, lease those, leave them in a will to someone after death. Feels creepy, right? So, luckily, the law does not recognize ownership of body parts and, and bodies, so we cannot sell them, rent them, lease them, pass them on in our wills. Um, for most of us, this is in instinctively morally wrong, for most cultures and religions as well. So luckily, the law follows this instinct and refuses to propertize our bodies and our organs for most, in most cases. But again, why does this matter? Aren't organs and our bodies very different from our Instagram account, our Facebook, our TikTok, our Snapchat, our personal data? Well, of course they are in many ways. But they're also similar in an important way that makes the law view them similarly. So let's take a look at this. Um, our organs, of course, make up, create our physical body in the same manner that our communications, our social media accounts, aspects and fragments of our identity create our informational body, as Professor Luciano Floridi calls it. So, in other words, just as we exist in this physical world, uh, we exist online through our informational bodies, our data, our communications, our um, social media. 
So if you look at it uh, in, in this way, organs and information are not that different after all. So the argument that is, is then that in legal terms, we should not own our personal data just like we don't own our organs. And um, this is because it is um, very much related to who we are as human beings, to our abstract moral values that are more than just a thing. So the good news is that at the moment, the law follows this, um, this instinct and this argument and refuses to propertize personal data. So your personal data are not objects of property. You cannot own them as you can own your car. And there have been some attempts in, in scholarship to, to propertize personal data, mostly in America, but luckily this hasn't happened. And I argue it should remain like that. This shouldn't change. So once more, why does this all matter? Well, let's take a look at this uh, example. Someone dies, and their persona, their self, their identity, their data remains online. What happens to all of that? Can you just decide to leave some of your messages, some of your photos, some of your content online to a beneficiary, to a family member, to a friend, to pass it on? Can you decide that you want it all destroyed? Can you prevent someone from creating a chatbot in your likeness, a hologram. Well, because the, this data and the content is not your property, you cannot decide in your will that something should or should not happen with, with, with this. And um, heirs cannot inherit this content in the same way in most countries as, as they can inherit your car, for example. So, it would be easy just to say, well, let's propertize this, propertize this. Let's make all of this our property so we can pass it on with no issues. We can make decisions. We can control that. We don't want to be immortal so we can prevent someone from creating, creating this chatbot in our likeness. Once again, I argue that this should not happen. We should not consider this, this content as, pro as property. So, Let's look at the court cases, as lawyers, we like to look at, at, at court cases often. So almost two decades ago, um, there was a case that um, involved Yahoo and parents of a dead, ma dead marine, Justin Ellsworth, in the US, where the parents wanted to access his emails, and um, Yahoo refused to grant access because they said, well, we're protecting his privacy. The court disagreed, and ordered that Yahoo should permit the access, but instead Yahoo just delivered a DVD with the content of the emails, rather than allowing the full access. The property argument against, uh, again was used by, by the parents, but the court unfortunately did not decide on, the, on this. A um, few years later in England, a judge was looking at emails, asking whether emails can be property, and um, decided, I think, helpfully, that emails cannot be objects of property because of the lack of, as we call it, tangibility. So we cannot touch an email. But also, importantly, excludability. We cannot exclude others from possessing the same email as we can as we, when we possess a car or this thing. So some clarity around property there. Uh, in Germany in 2018, there was an interesting case reported by the media where parents of a dead girl wanted to access her Facebook account to establish whether her, to understand whether her uh, death was really suicide. Facebook once more refused, saying that they were protecting her privacy, and the federal court decided, a uh, German federal court, to grant this access, saying that Parents are heirs of this girl, and they have the right to step into her shoes as her heirs and inherit not just property, but also contracts and accounts that she had, in this case with Facebook. More recently in England, um, a widow wanted to access her dead partner's um, Apple account so that she can download photos that were stored there and let her, let her daughter have those. Uh, the court struggled, struggled with issues here, whether this was property or not, and whether there was this right in English law. However, the court 
did grant access and order access, and Apple did, did provide this access. But the judge, interestingly, called for a law reform in this area. The law reform is sadly not forthcoming, so we are still unsure in this country and in many other countries around the world whether we have any control over our content after death. So, even if this was the case in the law, let's say the law is certain and we have figured things out as we haven't, uh, we still have these infamous TOSs. Anyone knows what a TOS is? EULA, TOS, Terms of Service, contracts that we click. I agree, we don't read, we just stick and click and do whatever. So those contracts dictate actually, as you probably know, our relationship with the platforms and, and social media companies. So most of them uh, don't have, either don't have provisions regarding deceased users, or they prohibit transfer of accounts on death, they prohibit access by heirs and, and beneficiaries. However, there have been some cases where uh, service providers have developed functionalities to address these issues. But they're far from perfect and they're quite unknown. So, has anyone here heard of Google Inactive Account Manager? Or Facebook Legacy Contact? Maybe one, one person, two individuals out of 100 and 200. Okay, that, that's my experience generally. So, um, these functionalities, I will, I will just show um, a screenshot of Facebook Legacy Contact here and later uh, Google Account, uh, Inactive Account Manager. They give you um, an option to leave some of your content to your beneficiaries. And these beneficiaries can be your friends on Facebook, anyone that you nominate. So, that's the Go um, Google service. So, apart from those not being known, as you have demonstrated and as my research demonstrates, the problem with those is that they can conflict with the law. So here is an illustration. Say I left something to my friend, I left a photo album uh, um, um, to my friend, and my heirs, my next of kin, wants that same album. What happens? They conflict, uh, and the law does not provide clarity on that. We don't have case law in this country and in other countries. But most likely, my gut feeling is that the heir under current laws would prevail and counter your decision expressed in those services. So not very helpful, is it? So what do we do? Should we just proclaim all this property and um, let the law operate as usual so that we do have some clarity and that we can leave it in a will? even though most of us will never leave a will, about uh, more than 50% of people in the UK will never leave a will. So, going back to what we've said about organs and physical bodies, when I made the comparison with informational bodies and why this and should never be property, we should look elsewhere for help and clarity. Where is this other place? Well, I have spent almost a decade developing a concept called post-mortem privacy. So, in short, I argue that privacy, autonomy, personhood should extend on death in some form and for some period. That way, aspects of our informational body would be preserved and protected similarly to how our physical body is protected. It will be honored and dealt with care. So, this could be done in, in various ways, say, being able to leave, leave some of our personal stuff in a will, um, recognizing those text solutions that I've mentioned in Active Account Manager and, and Facebook Legacy Contact uh, explicitly in the law, uh, deciding that we just want everything deleted on death and that's honored. So, there are ways that we can do that. So, I argue that this is a better way to protect who we are, our identities, our humanity uh, better than if it was property, if it was a thing. So, we would be able to avoid this dangerous paradigm of ownership and property that we ascribe to external, soulless things, really. And we would look wider, and when we think about control, we would think about autonomy, dignity, human rights. We do have the tools in, in the law. 
we just need to think a bit more deeply about, about using those, such as, such as privacy, for example, or dignity, or personhood. So no, we don't own ourselves, luckily, and we shouldn't. Yet, we still keep thinking we do and we should, naively. We're just used to it, aren't we? Property and ownership in our Western societies has been there for centuries, and it's easy just to invoke property. But I invite you to think twice when you use this term. I invite you to think what matters to you as human beings and why it matters. I invite the law to keep following our instinct in this regard and what we think is morally and um, it, what, it, what com complies with our values. And I invite legislators, courts, and others to clean up some of this mess that I have outlined and give us the tools, provide us the tools to, to control our informational body. We just need to think about these tools a little bit more deeply and comprehensively. We need to decide to reform the law, recognize the new tech realities, and adapt or untap as well. Thank you. Thanks very much.